This is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. Hi, Rebels. This is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, the interview. I'm your host, Alea, and today we're talking to Anita Hill. She's read us the story of civil rights icon Rosa Parks. Make sure you give that episode a listen if you missed it. Okay, Anita, can you introduce yourself? I am Anita Hill, and I'm a teacher. I teach at Brandeis University. I teach law, and I teach government policies that I hope helps people who have been marginalized or discriminated against. What made you interested in law and becoming a lawyer? When I was a young girl, I watched the civil rights movement happening on television, on all of the newscasts. And I really believe that law could change the world. Specifically, I believe that it could end a lot of the racism and pain that was caused from the racism. You brought us the story of Rosa Parks, who fought bravely against racism. What does her story mean to you? Her story, Rosa Parks' story, is a model of courage. It really tells you that one person can change the world. One person can make a difference. But you have to be brave, and you have to be committed, and you have to be willing to follow your convictions, even when it's very difficult and hurtful. One of the important things about Rosa's story is that she and others were fighting laws that were unfair to people. Can you help us understand how the legal system can be used in fair and unfair ways? Well, what Mrs. Parks was fighting against was an example of how the legal system was used in ways that were unfair. The idea that people who were going and coming from work on any given day, like she was, could be told that they couldn't sit on an empty seat in the bus, that they had to move and maybe even stand after working all day, while other people were allowed to sit or even some seats were allowed to be empty. So that's an example of how laws were put in place that were very hurtful and very harmful. Really, I believe they were harmful to everybody, but especially the Black people in the South and in other places who had to live under them. What happened during the civil rights era was that there were laws passed to undo those hurtful laws, to end segregation, and to make sure that people were treated fairly and not judged by the color of their skin. What do you think we can learn from Rosa's story and the civil rights movement about the role of law in creating a more just society? Well, it is so important. You know, it was certainly important for me and my generation. I was a generation of lawyers that came up and that was inspired by cases like Brown versus the Board of Education where children were involved in a lawsuit to desegregate their schools. I also knew that I was going to grow up and that I should be a lawyer so that I could take the place of the lawyers who had moved on or passed on, who had brought those kinds of cases. We now are in a world where we are seeing that there are still battles to be fought. There are battles to be fought, whether they're around voting rights or just battles around making sure people have the basic needs met, whether it's health or housing. And there will always be room for lawyers, young lawyers with new ideas who are really committed to what is right to come and take the place of the generation of lawyers that I'm in. What can we do to encourage more women and people of color to become lawyers? And why is that important? My inspiration for being a lawyer didn't come from the men who were lawyers, even the ones who were fighting the civil rights battle. My inspiration came from women. The women who were part of the battle, a woman named Constance Baker Motley, 
who worked alongside Thurgood Marshall in the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, a woman named Patricia Harris, who was a secretary of housing. Today, there are so many women who are fighting for civil rights. There are not enough of them. There's room for many, many more. There's room for women lawyers fighting for civil rights. There's room for women lawyers who are going to go into corporate practices. Room for women lawyers who are going into government. And I would just encourage young women, young women of color, even when you think that it is impossible, just to look at the ones who are out there doing it right now and know that once they were young and they probably thought that being where they are today was impossible, but they pursued it anyway. That is inspiring to hear you say. So, Anita, if you could go back to when you were young and give yourself some advice, what would you say? I think when you're young, you want things to happen in a hurry. I mean, that's very natural. You can be very impatient. But I would say to my younger self, realize that you have your whole life ahead of you and think about that time as a luxury and enjoy it and relish it whenever you get discouraged. Instead of saying, I wish that things could happen faster, you should tell yourself, I have a long life to live and I am going to use all of my energy and time pursuing what's right. And I'm not going to worry about whether it happens today or whether it happens tomorrow because I know I'm going to be in it for the long haul. Unfortunately, this interview went by so fast. But last question, Anita Hill, what makes you a rebel girl? Uh, Because I'm stubborn. I'm a rebel because I'm stubborn and I won't take no for an answer. Thank you, Anita. And thank you for listening. If you like the show, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and share it with all of your friends. Catch you next time. Stay Rebel!